So you find yourself aimlessly floating on a raft with no supplies except for a plastic hook on a piece of rope. You're probably thinking, now what? Now in this video I will help you massively improve your odds of surviving the game at the start so you can easily survive even before visiting a single island. Welcome to Indie Game Guides and today I present to you my quick survival guide for Raft. Let me quickly tell you what to expect of this video. The entire guide is set up so at the end of it you should know exactly what to do to survive and in what order you should do it. We're not going to talk about visiting islands, navigating the sea and such because I will tackle that in another video. Now this guide is purely so you can easily make a decent sized raft and know everything you need to know to survive comfortably. Sounds good? Let's get started. So at the start you find yourself on a raft only 2x2 two two foundations big. Everywhere you see wreckage is floating around you and you can just pick it up as it floats by. You may feel tempted to jump into the water to grab whatever is out of reach, but don't forget you are never alone in raft. There's always a shark with you. Even if you manage to kill him, and I will tell you how in a moment, another one will respawn. Now if you see something out of your range, you just need to use the hook that you have and just throw it a little bit in front of the object so you can grab it by pulling the hook back to you. This way you can pick up multiple objects if you want, but that is not necessary. If you screwed up the throw, you can cancel your throw by right clicking and suddenly, magically, the hook will be in your hand once again to save you time. And don't forget, even while the hook is in the water, you can still pick up objects that are close enough to the raft. In the water you will find palm leaves, wooden planks and plastic in different forms. At one point, one will be more important than the other, but for right now, just pick everything up. If there is one item you must prioritize at all times, those are the barrels. Now these can contain the items that you've already been picking up, but also items that you won't find in the water, like rocks, metal scrap, blueprints and food. And food is what you will need a lot of in this game, but I will come back to that in a moment, I promise. You may also sometimes come across of an abandoned raft. Yeah, you can find these just by following the current and they will spawn randomly on the horizon. You just need to swim towards it, climb on top of it and just grab the crate that is holding some materials and recipes. The moment you walk on top of it, it will start to sink, so act fast. Now it's a really good way to get rare materials at the beginning of the game, but if it's worth jumping into the water with shark behind you, well, I will just leave that up to your judgment. Now let's talk about your tools and their durability. Now all your tools have a set durability like in most survival games. Now if you use it often enough, they will break. Since your hook at this point is your lifeline, build yourself immediately a second one. So if your first one breaks, just build another one. That way you will always have one in reserve and you will never find yourself without a hook nor the materials to craft one. Now with the materials you've been picking up, you should definitely craft a building hammer which will allow you to expand your raft and create various structures. Don't bother with the advanced structure just yet, just build foundations, but temper yourself because later on in the video I will talk about the placement of foundations a little bit more. But at the start a raft of about 8 by 2 foundations is all you need. You may also want to build yourself a wooden spear because often the shark will attack your raft and try to shoo off a piece. Now you can stop this by hitting him three times in the face with a wooden spear and it'll be cheaper than constantly rebuilding with a build hammer. If you manage to scare him away, you can repair the foundations by right clicking the building hammer and choose the repair mode. If you hit him enough times when he does this, he will also die. Now the next tools we need to talk about will also start the next chapter of this guide. So let's get started. But before we move on to that, I just really want to mention that you can always hit me up on Twitter or join our Discord if you have additional questions. And you can chat with me and other indie game enthusiasts on our Discord. And if you want to have a vote on which indie game gets featured next, be sure to subscribe, because we often organize open questions and do polls to decide which game gets a series of guides next. In fact, this video is one of those. So yeah, you know, subscribe. With that out of the way, let's continue with our next tip that's all about filling your belly. I'm sure as you were collecting, your character is getting thirsty and hungry. Now let's tackle your thirst first. The next thing you should do is build yourself a cup and a purifier. 
Place a purifier down in the middle of the raft, place some planks underneath it, fill your cup with seawater and empty it in the purifier. Just let it boil a few, little and voila, you have drinking water. You should always have this thing running because when you actually hit the threshold of thirst and hunger, your character will start to become weak and sluggish, so having it on hand is always useful. The food source is something you always need to manage. Now, as I said earlier, you can find food in barrels, either beets or potatoes. Now, personally, I wouldn't eat them because they can be used as a renewable food source. For now, I just want you to craft a fishing rod. Just throw your rod into the water and press a left mouse button when it asks you to. Before you know it, you'll get a fish and a little hint, you can still move around and pick up objects that float by while your line is in the water. Now that you find yourself in the possession of a fish, craft a simple grill and put it next to the purifier on your raft. Place some wooden planks underneath the grill and cook the fish on it. Now you don't want to eat raw food in this game, even potatoes, because the nutritional value is skyrocket the moment you cook them, compared to eating them raw. To talk a little bit more about the potatoes and the beets, build a small crop plot and place it somewhere in the middle of your raft. Now you can plant three vegetables in it and just water it with fresh water from the purifier once and wait. For each potato or beet you get two in return from this method. The only problem you will have is that seagulls will sometimes fly down to attack your plants. Now you can chase them away by moving close to them or kill them with your spear. Now since your raft is still pretty small at this point, they shouldn't be too much of an issue. And later on you can craft scarecrows that won't scare the seagulls away, but rather the birds will attack the scarecrow instead. If you let them carry their attack three times out on a scarecrow, it will break and leave your plants vulnerable again. Now gardening is a big part of the game because it allows you to focus less on fishing and give you some free time to do other things like improving your raft. So it is something you really will want to expand over time. Now in the meantime you still are running all over your raft, flinging your hook all directions to collect all the materials you want. Now let's get this solved next. Now let me introduce you to the best thing you can craft, the collection net. You just place it down just like any other foundation and it will collect all debris that flows into it regardless of its orientation. What you want to do now is to wait for before placing them down. Because they are quite expensive to make at a start, you will be wanting to protect them from the shark. So when you place one down, be sure to place some foundations around it. Later on you can place something called the foundation armor which is indestructible, but that's later on. Now as you're placing collection nets, leave a gap between them, it collects it across a wider area and items rarely float in between the nets without being caught, that way you can reach a bigger area with lesser costs. Now at first you may feel like you should just place down all the collection nets on a row, but just don't do that. Now as the wind changes directions, you may find suddenly all your nets in the wrong spot. Now you can move them by breaking the foundations and the nets with an axe and just switching them around. I personally prefer to make a raft of 10x10 foundations with the collection nets in an L shaped hidden away in it. That way they are always positioned in the right direction whichever the wind turns. By the way, as you're doing all this it's also important to place on a research table, that way you can place an item inside of it and whenever you find something new. And the research table will consume the item but teach you all kinds of recipes including how to make the items and things that you can make with this new item. Doing this will also allow you to progress further in the game and uncover all kinds of cool stuff. Now if you follow this guide, you should find yourself sitting comfortably on a raft with enough know-how to easily survive the ocean. In our next video we will start covering on how to navigate the open seas and visit islands. So if you found this guide useful, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this one, consider subscribing. We publish three guides like this one every week and I would love to get your input in the open questions and polls in our community page. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.